In a previous video, I discussed that there seems to be a lot of speed hype within the cycling industry. However, they seem to want to hide the actual benefits in terms of speed from you and from me. They will typically quote metrics like the amount of power saved at a certain speed. Because I couldn't find any reliable information on the effect of different components and technologies on speed, I decided to carry out some of my own testing. I didn't want to do the pseudoscience that you get in many other high-profile YouTube videos. I wanted my testing to be appropriately rigorous so that it gives meaningful results. I wanted these results to be applicable to me, an average cyclist. So not at 40 kilometers an hour, which is, I feel, unrealistic speed for most cyclists, but around 25 to 30 kilometers an hour. And I didn't want to know about power savings, I wanted to know about speed. I decided to create my own test protocol. This I covered in my last video in this series, and there's a link to it up here. Over the 450 kilometers that I rode, I actually gathered quite a lot of data. But in this video, I want to focus in on the difference between heavyweight touring bikes and relatively lightweight race type bikes. The details of the bikes that I used can be found in the protocol document. After each ride, I transferred the data to this spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet allowed me to carry out some basic statistical analysis, graph the results and produce some tables. I designed the test protocol so that the results would be meaningful from a practical point of view. I also wanted to check that they would be significant from a statistical perspective. In this graph I've plotted out all of the results from the shorter route with the average cycling speed for the route plotted against the average heart rate. Red is for the touring and blue for the race bikes. The R-square values are quite high, which is good. A t-test suggested that the difference between the different bikes was statistically significant. These simple tests suggest the results are meaningful from a statistical perspective. The graph shown here is the same as the previous one, but with that long route data added in. I've also zoomed the average speed axis. The results remain statistically meaningful, although we now have a mixed set of results, so we have to be careful in the interpretation. One thing you can see here is that for nominally identical rides, there's actually quite a range of different speeds that have been recorded. It's up to three kilometers an hour. And this is why I repeated the rides so I could average out any random errors. So what is the difference between the race bike and the touring bike speeds? All the main results are in this table. The top block of results is all the data from the 9.5 km route. The centre block is for the 40 km route only. And the bottom block of data is all of the data, that is the 9 and the 40 km routes combined. For each of these I give the distance, time and average speed for all of the rides combined. I then give the times when scaled to a 40 km distance. I plan to use this information in future videos. The final column gives the percentage speed increase of riding the race bike over the touring bike. Pause the video if you want to look at the details, but for now I'll just go to the All Data section. The bottom line is that for the same physiological input, the race bike went at 29.5 km an hour against the touring bike's 28.5 km an hour. So basically a 1 km an hour difference. This equated to 3.5% in terms of speed. I rode these two very different types of bikes over the same roads in very similar conditions and with matched levels of effort. What I found was that the race type bikes were approximately one kilometer an hour faster at around 30 kilometers an hour. I don't know about you, but I consider the difference in speed not that great considering the difference in the bikes. Not for the first time I've overestimated how much I can fit into a five minute video, so I'll stop here. However, over the next few weeks I'll create a new video where I'll reflect on and interpret what these results mean for me, an average club cyclist.